You are all much welcome to this interdisciplinary conference on ecosystem-based legal frameworks for the Baltic Sea, which is a joint conference arranged by the Stockholm Environmental Law and Policy Center at the Faculty of Law and the Baltic Ecosystem Assess um, Adaptive Management Project related to the Baltic uh, Center here, Baltic Sea Center at the university. My name is Jonas Ebbeson. I'm a professor of environmental law and also now the dean of the law faculty. And I've been one of many who have been engaged in this uh, transdisciplinary program of which this conference is one part. And here next to me is my name is uh, Thorsten Lengner. I'm at the Stockholm Modeling Center and also the network coordinator of BEAM, Baltic Ecosystem Adaptive Management Program. When we arranged this, uh, prepared for this conference, we had the ambition to get around 70, 80 participants, but we were not at all sure how many we would get. And only a month ago or so, there were some 20, 25 participants, but we were eager then to go out and to uh, remind those of you who hadn't yet uh, registered to do so. And we're very happy to see now how, uh, what the great interest in this conference. And also, if we look at the, on the list of participants, we can see how well it reflects our ambitions. We have lawyers, obviously, we have several academics from other disciplines uh, engaged in environmental policy, natural science, and so on, uh, focusing on the Baltic Sea. We have practitioners from governments, from government, from uh, public authorities, uh, from local authorities. We have uh, civil servants, NGOs, uh, and a great spectrum of uh, participants, which we are very happy with. The purpose of the conference, or the purposes, are to, of course, to highlight the crucial problems that we face with respect to the Baltic Sea environment and this social ecological context framing this problem. It is, of course, also to highlight the need for transdisciplinary endeavors, of which this is a part, and we will say something more later on today, about the future of transdisciplinary environmental research relating to the Baltic Sea um, at the university here. And, of course, which is always a challenge when you have uh, participants from different disciplines, to, to learn and to improve our communication, to see how lawyers, social scientists, natural scientists and practitioners can communicate and can relate to a similar uh, problem. So the title requires some explanation. One of them is, of course, what's meant by ecosystem-based. Now, Torsten will say a few words about this, but also give you a bit of the background of BEAM. Please, Torsten. Thank you very much, Jonas. Um, you may have wondered why this is dropping here, but this is a small experiment. So we're doing being resilient, so it's coming dropping from uh, from the um, from the roof here. So we're filling up the uh, the Baltic Sea at the end, hopefully. So um, the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is a very fantastic environment. Uh, we're going uh, sailing over the summer, bathing um, in the winter time. We're doing skating. So it's a very nice environment, really reconnecting often humans to nature. So uh, today we will talk about the legal framework of the Baltic Sea. But before going into that, I just want to set you a bit into the mood of the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is an, uh, also a sea which has been a lot of threats. Uh, one of them is, for example, climate change. It has one of the highest rates in temperature increase um, globally. We're coming out as soon a new back book, back assessment, climate assessment for the Baltic Sea. Um, so this is a, a global pressure which uh, has uh, effects here on, on the Baltic Sea. At the same time, we have a lot of shipping. So as we are speaking now, there are probably around 2,000 uh, ships going over the Baltic Sea. Um, we're having uh, overfishing over the last uh, years or so, decades, where we had a decrease in the cod stock. We have a lot of nutrient loading uh, from, uh, from the land uh, the last 60 years or so, which leading to algae blooms and uh, anoxic areas in the bottom. So these are one of the major threats besides others. Um, and, but there are also quite some success stories. We have institutions uh, like HELCOM, national institutions and ISIS, where they really try to improve the Baltic via management actions. At the same time, we have now the implementation of the Marine Framework Directive, 
So these are success stories. However, because of the cumulative impacts of the Baltic Sea and often also this international linkage to uh, like shipping and trading and prices, uh, all that affects the Baltic and uh, how it affects in a cumulative manner is often not so much known. So that's why we have a, a BEAM program here, the Baltic Ecosystem Adaptive Management Program, which is the, uh, one of the um, the Swedish government strategic research areas. And our program here is to advance science uh, in relation to Baltic Sea management. So it's within disciplines, but it's also more in particular across disciplines, because we're having so many different impacts, different drivers, that requires an interdisciplinary group of researchers to uh, work on these problems, both locally, regional, but also globally. So that's the, uh, the BEAM program, and uh, some of the results of BEAM will also be presented today. So, so much for what's ecosystem and what BEAM has. But what do we mean by legal frameworks? Well, lawyers tend to discuss law in metaphors of levels quite frequently, and even frameworks as a metaphor. But what we will uh, highlight today is also not only how law matters for the ecosystem, but also how different parts of the legal structures uh, matters. The climate change issues was just mentioned here before, and of course there is a global legal framework relating to climate change, so there is a global context uh, for the Baltic Sea legal aspects as well. There is an international regime, the Baltic Sea Convention, you will hear more about that today, which is a crucial part, as was just mentioned. Relating to that, action plans of different sorts have been adopted. Other forms of documents and policy and program action plans have been adopted, which may not have formally legal status, but which are nevertheless crucial also from a legal point of view. Moreover, European Union law is fundamental with not least the Marine Strategies Directive. The national laws of the riparian states along the Baltic Sea coastline also going down to local levels where you may have different legal structures, legal decision-making uh, of, of high importance, and how these different levels relate to each other is, is fundamental. It's also an issue not only about looking at legal texts and analyze uh, from a linguistic point of view what the law says and how the law stands, but also to see what the law requires and what the law enables, which institutions are related to these legal frameworks. We can find in different regional sea conventions around the world rather similar texts. Many of them were adopted in the 1970s and 80s. And some of them have more or less been carbon copied. But the impact in reality differs considerably because there are different institutional uh, backings. In some parts of the world, the treaty is more or less black letters and white background. Whereas in others, not least the Baltic Sea, the legal text are also uh, related to institutional structures which are crucial. With HELCOM, with EU, with national governments, with civil society organizations, uh, non-governmental organizations, with individuals, with the corporate sector, and so on. Um, and all these things are involved in this legal framework. How is compliance monitored? How is implementation checked? What kind of incentives or possibly sanctions are there for failure to comply? Who can trigger compliance examinations and so on? These are some of the crucial issues that we will address today. So, Torsten, uh, would you like to guide us through the program before we start the first session? It would be a pleasure. Um, so, in the morning we will start with uh, a bit more broader perspective, law and ecology, um, which will be moderated by Jonas. Um, so the overall frame of that program is that we will have talks in a row and then there will be please save your questions if you have any and then the, all the speakers for each session will then be standing here at the front um, and you will have the time to ask the questions and we will try to moderate that a bit. Um, a very important issue is that we have at 10.30 we have a coffee break um, which is often very important. And um, they actually, in relation to the coffee bag, there will be also toilets outside, just in case. 
Um, then uh, we have a session on ecosystem based law on fishery management. And that goes uh, until lunchtime. And there will be lunch served outside here. After lunch, we will then go a bit more into the, the legal aspects of dutification and having interesting talks here from international speakers. And then at the end, we have at four o'clock an open panel uh, with some of the distinguished speakers here. And uh, there's the aim to wrap up the entire day, hopefully also across sectors, how, to, how these sectors are linked, how can we we uh, advance our understanding, but also the next steps in legal frameworks. Um, then at the, uh, after that, at five o'clock, if you wish, we're having a, a Baltic bar, where it's a possibility to, uh, to mingle, to buy some snacks and uh, also some uh, wine and beer. So that's the en entire framework. So this event will also be filmed, so uh, later on it will be available on the, on the homepage. And um, yeah, as I said, please uh, have an interesting uh, discussion. So be open for asking questions so that we have really a, a dialogue. And those ones are assured during the panel discussions and particular also at the end. All right. So thank you. Just a last point before I invite the first speakers for the first session to say that we have now been working with this BEAM uh, program for a couple of years. And we are now in the process of being evaluated. We will have funding cleared for, for the coming years, and we hope that we will have a successful assessment, because then we will be offered future fundings, which will be focusing on issues relating to what we will be discussing today, among others.